just weren't as good as we needed to be. It won't be a sweep in the Stanley Cup final for the Avalanche. The Avs lose for the first time on the road this postseason and now have to regroup before game four. We win as a team, lose as a team. Plus, an Avs fan says goodbye to a friend, the tribute that got them in trouble. This is the team that he loved more than anything. Plus, we're learning new details about the Uvalde school shooting, video showing police inside minutes after the gunman entered the school. 58 minutes pass from the time we see these officers in that video, in that screen grab, to when they ultimately breach that classroom. And thousands of federal firefighters are getting a boost in pay. Happening right now, another public hearing just got underway in the investigation into the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. ABC News is airing a special report right now on Denver 7. Now, if you'd like to watch those hearings, you can tune in to Denver 7 over the air, or you can just hit your back button right here on Denver 7 Plus. We will have a full recap of those hearings throughout this afternoon on air on Denver 7 Plus, on the DenverChannel.com, and then we'll see you on for Denver 7 News at 4 o'clock. Now, the House committee says today's hearing will detail evidence about the elaborate scheme to push state officials to reject the 2020 presidential election results. They will also discuss the plan to create fake pro-Trump electors to illegally hand Trump a second term. We will hear from Georgia's Secretary of State, who says Trump asked him to find votes to prevent Joe Biden's victory in the election. To the Avs in sports, it won't be a Stanley Cup sweep for our Avalanche. The Lightning stormed back in Game 3, winning 6-2 on their home ice. This is now the highest scoring Stanley Cup final through three games in 40 years. So far, 22 combined goals have been scored. The Avs still lead the series two games to one, so if the Avs win the next one, they could win the Cup at home Friday night in Game 5. Denver 7's Brian Sanders is in Tampa and has a recap of that forgettable night in Florida. Yeah, it was probably a little ambitious for the Avs fans to think that their team would skate through this Stanley Cup Final Series with a sweep. Uh, unfortunately, they ran into the back-to-back -back defending cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning as they showed their true grit, and we have ha seen several Bolts fans come along the Tampa Riverwalk here, re-energized by last night's Game 3 win at Emily Arena. Meanwhile, for the Avs, they're trying to regroup on an off day today. They were able to strike first in the game last night. Got a couple goals courtesy of Gabe Landeskog off a power play. They did have another goal negated by an offside call and some early penalties that hurt them. But uh, more than anything, the Lightning showed their grit with their relentless attack. And Darcy Kemper had a rough night to the point that head coach Jared Bednar had to pull him after the Bolts' fifth goal and replace him with goalie Pavel Franco. One of the big things is I thought, not that we didn't compete, because I liked some of our compete tonight, some of the things we did, but I think we had an advantage when it came to the competitive spirit in Game 1 and Game 2, and tonight they had it. They played with a little bit more desperation. So that will be an important decision for Coach Bednar to make, who will start at goalie in Game 4, and we hope to learn a little bit more about that today when the Avs take the ice here at 1.30 Eastern Time. Meanwhile, for the fans, they're staying optimistic. The Avs still lead the series two games to one, and the watch party at Ball Arena last night was packed. Quite the crowd filling both the first and second levels there. We did have a chance to speak to one Avs fan who says, hey, this is just a bump in the road. I think they fought, but obviously Tampa Bay came out and they uh, pushed back after last game. But I think the Avs have matured a lot over the last couple of years. And this is the year that we bounce right back after a loss like that. And we're going to take a win at home. Cody, who you just saw there, was five years old the last time the Avs hoisted the cup back in 2001. And the silver lining, if there is one, to a Game 3 loss, if they can pull out a Game 4 win, they will have a chance to win the Stanley Cup back on home ice on Friday in Game 5. Jason, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Brian Sanders getting a tan down there in Tampa. Brian, thank you. Now, you are out of luck, though, if you want to watch Game 4 at Ball Arena. Tickets are already sold out for that watch party for tomorrow night's game. But you can still get tickets for Friday's Game 5 at home. Ticketmaster has prices ranging from just over $1,000 without fees to nearly $8,000. Those prices will likely go up if the Avs win Game 4. 
Now, Ball Arena in downtown Denver will, of course, be full of ABS fans for Game 5 Friday night. As Denver 7's Christian Lopez reports, a passionate fan will be with the team in spirit for that game. This was Ryan Clark's best friend, best man, and, a shot, rebound, goal. and favorite person to go to the Avs games with, Kyle Stark. He passed away right before Christmas Eve last year. I just love him very much, miss him a lot. Wish we were doing a different kind of interview. Wish we were those fans that were coming out of the arena. A few months ago, Ryan decided to spread some of Kyle's ashes at Ball Arena, a place he loved. We had him in a little baggie. We got Kyle over <laughs> over the, the glass and onto the ice. One of the ushers had come up to me and was like, hey, dude, um, what was that? And I was like, well, to be honest with you, that was my best friend, Kyle. He died. After that, Ryan was escorted out of Ball Arena. A few weeks later, received a letter saying that he had been banned from all Avalanche events for the rest of the season. You have no regrets. You would do it all over no. again. Oh, I'll do it all. I'd do it all over again with the biggest smile on my face like I did last time. Ryan has been cheering his team on from home during the playoffs. When asked constantly, you know, well, where do you think he is? That Zamboni got him all over the ice, you know? He's all over. <laughs> Again, not the brightest idea, but in my heart, the best way I could give tribute to my friend for what he truly loved more than anything in the world. Reporting in Denver, Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Okay, so let's bring you up to speed on the schedule for things. You can watch Game 4 tomorrow night. That's right here on Denver 7. Our team coverage starts at 4.30 a.m. Our pregame show begins at 5.30 p.m. with Andrew Heo back outside Amelie Arena. Puck drops at 6 o'clock. The Avs Kale McCarr is up for the league's best defenseman during tonight's NHL awards. McCarr is one of three finalists for the Norris Memorial Trophy. He's the fourth defenseman to be voted as a finalist for an NHL award in each of his first three seasons. The awards start at 5 and will be broadcast on ESPN. Other news now, President Joe Biden says he's trying to find ways to lower gas prices, including gas rebate cards and taxing oil companies. He's also considering a temporary gas tax holiday during the 4th of July weekend. Now that would mean lowering prices by more than 18 cents a gallon. The gas tax helps fund road construction, so having a tax holiday would likely take away some funding just passed by Congress. It might help drivers in the short term, but it is it is at the expense of our infrastructure. The federal gas tax is the number one way we fund federal highway infrastructure in this country. Suspending it might have an impact on our roads that we'll feel years from now. President Biden can't suspend the gas tax himself. That would require an act of Congress. More than 16,000 federal wildland firefighters are getting a raise. President Joe Biden approved that raise this morning. Pay raises were included in last year's infrastructure bill. They were delayed as administration officials looked at recruitment and retention data to decide where those raises should go. We're learning new details about the police response at the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. It's been four weeks since 19 children and two teachers were killed. Rena Roy reports on the new surveillance images showing what happened moments before the shooting. Texas state lawmakers reviewing new evidence in the Uvalde school massacre. I hope today with the uh, witnesses that we have, we can get near to the bottom of the facts uh, because they've been elusive. We're all in the dark. After a legislative committee investigating law enforcement's response uncovered damning details, despite officers claiming they were waiting for a key to unlock the classroom door, surveillance video showing they never even tried to open it. A surveillance image also shows multiple police officers standing inside the building with rifles and at least one ballistic shield 19 minutes after the gunman entered. This despite school police chief Pete Arredondo's original claim that the officers were not properly armed to take down the gunman at that point. The Texas director of public safety testifying, saying his department's ongoing probe has uncovered compelling evidence suggesting police response was an abject failure. Three minutes after the subject entered the West Building, there was sufficient number of armed officers wearing body armor to isolate, distract, and neutralize the subject. 
Officers didn't enter the classroom and kill the shooter until 58 minutes later. 19 children and two teachers killed. Police have yet to comment on the surveillance image. Victims' parents calling for Arredondo to step down. He's testifying behind closed doors before the State House Legislative Committee investigating the shooting today. Having Pete still employed, knowing he is incapable of decision making that saves lives is terrifying. Arredondo has defended his actions in interviews, saying officers didn't hesitate to save lives, but had to adjust to what they faced. How are we supposed to continue our lives here? Parents pleading for the truth. Do us the favor and do what you know is right. Parents are hoping the two different hearings in the Senate and House shed some light on what actually happened inside that school after weeks of confusion and conflicting information. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Lafayette's City Council will consider stricter gun laws at a meeting tonight. The city wants to ban open carry in public places and on city property. Officials also want gun dealers to post signs warning of gun dangers. Those ordinances already passed a first reading. Today marks one year since Arvada Police Officer Gordon Beasley and Good Samaritan Johnny Hurley died during a shooting in Old Town Arvada. People can pay their respects to Officer Beasley by, by visiting a memorial placed outside the Arvada Police Department at City Hall. There will also be a moment of silence at the town square to remember Johnny Hurley. That is scheduled for just after 1.30. Well, new at 11, Coloradans are getting more money from the Colorado Cashback Plan. Now, these are Tabor refund checks. Single tax filers will now get $750 up from $500. Joint filers will get $1,500. The amount is going up because of Colorado's economic recovery. Checks will be mailed this summer. Well, car thefts are soaring across the metro. Still ahead, Denver 7 Investigates is looking at the data, including where your car is most likely to get stolen. And a Colorado bookstore is expanding outside of the metro.